Hello everyone, this is um, Teacher Wayne and I'm just continuing my uh, Unity series uh, with, that, with an FPS game um, that I'm setting up and just been playing about with. I've done an environment video, created a simple environment. Uh, the last video I just introduced the concept of a health bar. Um, it's quite a long video the last one this one i'm going to be looking at uh, the animation control for the uh, zombie character so if you can see on the screen in front of you you've got this this zombie character in the last video i did i2 so i've just literally created one let me just show there are a few differences at the beginning of this uh, from where i left the last video but no major change i'm going to go through all the different changes i've done and how we implement them. Um, I've got some new scripts and I've got an animation control as well but basically what we want to do is get this character here walking towards the player character, uh, moving up to him and um, attacking and then also we'll have what's known as an idle state. Um, basically I'm introducing the concept of a finite, finite state machine concept. Um, it's uh, something that I teach at degree level to my BSc students the concept of a finite state machine and it's actually built into unity and I find that just awesome so I'm going to show you what uh, the current finite state machine for this what basically finite state machine just uh, an FYI is basically the different states of existence uh, that a um, NPC can be in, AI characters can be in. So, for example, the state of existence that this zombie can be in is a idle state. In other words, is not doing much. Is uh, another state of existence this this character can be in is what's known as a walk state, where he's walking from one point to another point. Um, another state he can be in is an an attack, where he's attacking the player character. Another one is well, he's dead. He falls down. So he's got different states and all that is created in what's known as a, you set all these up in what's known as an animation controller and I'll be showing you that shortly. So um, here we are, I've got the game set up here, let me just go through where, where the starting place, I've got this uh, basic environment set up, I've got a lake in the middle, it's not exactly as it was before, I've got some trees, I've got mountain range, uh, I've got one zombie and so if i just click here on the scene i've got my zombie the player i've renamed that to play character i might not have called that what it is also the if you look at the canvas here you notice my health bar i've actually got a circle now i've just been playing about with that i thought i'd try something different uh, and here i've got it set before i had it as like a simple little bar that went across now i've got the actual thing as a circle and if you look here can you see it says radio 360 before i had it horizontal now i've just changed it to radio 360 if you look here the health is now like almost like a clock i was just playing about with it really just just try different things so now i've just changed it to radio free it makes no difference if you're doing this you can keep yours as a bar if you're trying to follow what i'm doing it will make no difference to the game whatsoever because at the end of the day the fill amount here is still a percentage between not when not you're dead one you're full and anywhere between you're in a what's known as a different state of health as a percentage so anyway i was saying i've got a play character i've got one zombie character i've got my uh, water as before I've got trees and I've got an environment and so what we want to do is this this the focus of this video is to talk about how this uh, AI character can move around between his different finite states so let's crack on with that shall we so first things first we're going to be using just oh first things first is I want to just introduce this bit at the left hand side of these is my scene I've got all the zombie character player character uh, everything as before down here you notice i've got some extra bits basically i've just imported some low poly assets from the uh asset store there's quite a lot of free low poly assets 
the advantage of low poly assets is they're very lightweight in space they're used uh, i've got the free version of unity here and you've only got one gig of space so when you're creating games you want to try to be efficient of how much space to take this entire game concept here is only 200 meg which if you compare that to a, a unreal game it's a tiny percentage of what a similar game would be in unreal the far more memory efficient storage efficient games i find unity i mean that's one of the big pluses for me for unity also this collaboration here is awesome as well anyway um <clears throat> so i'm quickly becoming a bit of a unity fan by doing all these um remember my background is more unreal than unity if you've seen my other videos but anyway uh let's just talk about this down here i've got this folder called my stuff in my stuff I put all my stuff, as in all the scripts. Uh, and also I've got the controller frame. So if I open up my stuff here, you notice I've got scenes. So I've got the main scene in there. I've got the scripts. I've got a new one called AI Behavior, which is a replacement for something I call Take Damage and Health Manager, which is virtually identical. And I've got this here, which is an animator, which I'll come to a bit. I've also got another one here. So uh, let me just delete oh, what's in here yeah that's this here is the state machine i'm going to delete it and i'm going to go through it but this is what we're going to finally get set up i'm going to quickly delete that and we're going to create a new state machine so if we click on our zombie if you click here it says controller none i've just deleted it it's got no controller so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a controller to control the animation of this zombie. At the moment, there's no controller attached to this zombie. It will do nothing other than just stand still. Let me just press play and show you this. So there he is. He's going to be stood in his little t pose, And, oh, he does damage because of a script I've got, but he doesn't actually do anything. Oh, he's facing me. That's the script. I've got a lovely little... C sash sharp script that gets him to move around and we take damage we get too close to him um, but that's it it doesn't actually animate so let's go to the animation so uh, first thing we're going to do go to scenes again zoom back here we're going to create here an animation controller so you go create my stuff right click create animation controller and there you are and i'm going to rename this to uh, zombie controller zombie animator in fact animator right so just double click on it and it opens it up and you notice we've got something called any state and entry don't worry about those for now so with what we're going to do now is we're going to go to assets we're going to find our zombie remember last time we imported this zombie this is a free um a free sort of element we can get from the asset store so if you look here we've got animations and if you look we've got other different states he's got a attack animation i thought these were already created by the uh, the author of this game i didn't create any of these um that's an entirely different thing he's even got his own little zombie controller we can use a pre-made one but i'm going to going to create a new one just to show you that bit we're going to now copy across these different uh, animation states we've got attack falling back idle walk and walk in place so we're going to need the idle so the idle is the first one so let's go idle um, if you notice that's a little uh, what's known as a transition between entries and the first thing is going to do to the idle so yeah we want it to be idle by default to begin with but also we want him to walk so let's have a walk transition we also want him to attack so we'll put copy a transition attack transition also we need a falling back falling back is uh, basically he's, he falls back he dies so what we're going to do is the three the four states is going to move between is idle as a default one and we're going to have walk, attack, and falling back. So we're going to create a transition between idle and walk. So we'll literally right click on it, click make transition, and click walk. Then click on walk, then right click on and 
uh, make transitions. Can you see we've got an arrow going backwards and forwards? So it can it'll basically be in an idle state or a walk state. So once again, we want to do between. Uh, we can have him so that he can be idle. And he can do an attack if the player character is nearby. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just getting the arrows back and forth. Also, it can be walking and attacking and or walking. But also, it can be uh, it can be attacking, but it can also have to I'll actually. Uh, well, yeah, we'll put them in for now, but we're not actually going to implement them in this video. But anyway, so. Uh, you can't go between falling back and idle, but I'm not too worried about that yet because my focus is actually these three. So what we're going to do, if you click on uh, the animate here, we already clicked on it, sorry. You've got layers and parameters. Can you see you've got parameters? What we're going to do is we're going to click this plus here. We're going to create some Boolean variables to set the stage. So basically we're going to have some... <clears throat> We're going to create four boolean variables one called is idle is walk is attack so is it is he in the idle state is he in the walk state is he in the attack state or is he in the falling back state so let's click and they're all boolean so click boo so is i do lowercase is and then uppercase and i'm doing it the same state of what it is so is it idle the first one is going to be idle so capital i idle and tick because that's a default stage of another boolean is walk uh, boolean is attack and I'll add is falling back is oops I want to just simplify it to is falling so we've got four boolean variables and they associate with each of the four states we've got. We're only really focusing the top three, but I've put all four in just for now. So is idle. Can you see we've got these transitions and for each of these transitions, we can assign these variables we've got. So from to move from idle to walk, is walk needs to be true. So I'll click here. Condition is, is, and I'll scroll down, is walk. If it's true, then it goes from is idle state to is walk state. This is called, um, basically we're using um, a, this is how we do the finite state. So we're moving from one finite state to another finite state, depending if this variable set is true. Now, if I click on that arrow going down, obviously it's because is idle is true. So if idle, if idle is true, it goes that way. If walk is true, it goes that way. Same for this. Attack is if walk is true that way is if is attack find attack attack is true that's if his walk is true is attack true here we just literally are for each of these arrows we just set what's true so this one here is if idle is true that one there is if attack is true it's quite straightforward really i love it it's so simple this is his falling back now we won't be using this for my example but it's something for later on and this one here is if attack is true. So now each of these states we quickly set up. We don't have to worry about this transition because basically it means when it starts it goes straight to idle. We're not in, so there you are. Uh, so we've got, and you can see you've got this little picture that says walk, walk, and it goes to idle. If idle is true, and that one is walk true. So we have set up the parameters for the zombie. Now, uh, another thing we need to do is my stuff here. This is the uh, this is what we set. We've got to we set this and put it into zombies. So click on zombie here. We point to well, we can just simply drag and drop that. So that animation controller now runs. So his idle is ticked now, so he will go in as a state of, if I press play, we should go in the idle state by default. So, there, oh, he's walking. Why? Oh, I've got my script. <laughs> Sorry, I do have a script that makes him walk, you see, I'm cheating a little bit. I turned that off, but he's in idle state. Uh, 
sorry I've got my scripts running which I'm going to go through now um, right give me a minute I forgot about that I want to try to show you in an earlier stage bear with me two seconds let me just comment out stuff no I won't I'll just simply show you because I just want to keep this video quite short really what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my scripts now so this is what we used to have I had one called take damage which was assigned to the zombie in fact what I'm going to do I'm going to attach it to it now so it was attached to the zombie but now I've got it replaced with AI behavior and my health manager was that so let me show you my new health manager my new health manager is which is in my stuff I put it in scripts I suggest you put it in a nice safe place yourself is health manager I've got roughly the same I've got uh, let's go through I've got min and max uh, public variables which I've set that as a hundred if you look here play character in my canvas I've got my uh, max health set at 100 a minute there and it points to background color which is the green little bar there so very similar to what I had before and that's my health bar script is attached to the canvas which is attached to the player character but basically we have created this show health uh, ver um, function that we'll be calling in um we will be sort of no sorry this is the one that gets public so public means it's publicly available take damage that one this is called uh using the ai behavior script it was called in take damage the old one but now i've got this new one called uh, ai behavior i'll show you shortly and it basically reduces the health by one and then updates the health bar and that's all it does the health manager basically is just displays the health bar and uh, allows us to take damage so let me just show you the AI behavior there's a lot on this script so let me just show you it so the zombie character right okay so new bits in so create a new script call it AI behavior and I'll just go through what it is remember one of the things I I'm not that too interested in, we're not really interested in learning C sharp. I'm more interested in giving your sheep C sharp code to do stuff and you can sort of learn it intrinsically rather than just trying to figure it out as and understand it that way. This is sort of applying it. I think this is a better way of learning C sharp. You just use it by doing. So anyway, I've got a load of commented out stuff here. So don't worry about the commented out green stuff. You want to focus on the stuff that's saying first of all i've created this variable here so for, yeah that bit's what we've had before so i'm basically i am uh using the health bar manager uh class here and i'm importing it here making it public so remember because this is a publicly exposed thing we need to physically connect it if you look here health bar script here health manager we it's uh, sorry not that one zombie here it will be connected to the health bar character can you see it's nicked lit hb is linked publicly there how to drag and drop it down uh probably not being as clear as i can be but basically because it's public because this is the ai ai controller which is here uh because HP is publicly exposed there you need to f do a physical connection as well graphical GUI connection between the health bar manager uh, in the canvas but I'll let you figure that out all you have to do is click that button there until you find it which is the canvas there so anyway I say connect it right public transfer player basically we claim the transform is basically basically as it just, I've got my mouse over it tells you what it does 
it sets the position, the rotation scale of an object and we create in a public transform and we call in it player. Basically, so that it will point to the the position of the player, the rotation of the uh, of the player, are the ones we're not looking at the scale of the player so much. Um, and then we're doing a, a creating two other variables, one called distance, which is distance from the zombie to the player character. The other one is angle. In other words, the what I mean by the angle is uh, if we go like this, zoom above. If I click on it, can you see you got that little arrow? The angle is the angle from this here, which is, I think, called the Z. Yeah, it's the Z. You can see the Z is increasing backwards and forwards. The Z here and the angle f round from there. So I've, I'm thinking what you want to do is you don't want the zombie to sort of, you want it to have blind spots. So I've got sort of, you can do like a, an idea one is like 45 degrees. I think I might set this at 35 degrees. So it's 35 degrees from this point here, round to about here. So you can only see up to this angle. So if you're stood here or here, you will not see it. And certainly not if you're behind him. So back to here. So I've got angle and distance. I've also created something called Anin, which is the animation controller which we have this one, we don't need that. It's this one here. So we're linking to that one as well. Because we do need to access the four Boolean variables we set up in there. So this here allows us to connect to those four Boolean. Because what we're going to do is we're going to change those Boolean variables. And by changing those Boolean variables, we get the zombie to animate. That's all it is. It's quite straightforward, really, if you think about it logically. So the start, let's go through any we we getting the component called animator so we're getting a, the components from them the specific components we want is we want the variables is idle is attack and is walk those are the components we're really after and this is how we get hold of them so let's have a look the update function for this ai behavior everything happens in update so first of all we need to figure out the distance so here i'll go through this line Distance, which we defined up there, vector free, which basically is, um, if you move your mouse over it, which is great, it actually tells what it does, it gives us a three dimensional uh, distance, three dimensional, we can start accessing three dimensional sort of information and unity, and we're getting from the player, posi player position to this position. So it's the distance from the player to us. This means this, means this sort of entity, this character, which is the zombie, from the player to this entity, which is the zombie. What is the actual physical distance between them? So another one, and we're actually defining it here. An angle is the angle, which I described earlier. We're getting the actual angle between um, where the player character is to the actual uh, zombie, the, the, the Z position that was shown you. So that's how we calculate the distance and how we calculate the angle. Now, all I've done is I've created three states. I've created an idle state, a walking state, and an attacking state. And they're all based on the distance and the angle. So if you look here, so for the zombie to be idle and not moving, and if, so if the distance is greater than 30, which is 30 game units, um, it's a bit hard to describe how, how far they are, but when you're playing your game, you'll be able to fiddle with it. 30 is quite a big distance, believe it or not. And what we want to do is we want to say if it's greater than 30, he cannot see us. We're outside his, his range. I mean, obviously, you can change that value, make it much bigger than you want. Let <coughs> me reduce that to 30, actually then we want to set the is idle boolean variable to true is attack as false and is walk as false so in other words it just it goes in the idle state and it doesn't move this one here oh by the way this bit i've great greened out is uh, that forces him if you go this transform dot translate zero dot zero that means just stay still so it forced them to stay still, but I'm rem I commented this out 
because I didn't need to do that. Another one is here. So what we're saying is if the distance is less than 30 and the angle is greater than 35, then the zombie can see him, so he should start moving towards it. Um, so here, we've got two bits here. Can I just describe what this one is first of all? This dot transform dot rotation. First thing we want to do is we get the zombie to rotate to the player characters. So it follows them around and rotates to them. And we do know what's known as a slurp. Now, I just um, want to just say that you can actually get them to automatically snap to the player, but that looks a bit naff. But if you do a slurp, it's like a gradual rotation. It doesn't look jerky. So it rotates... Look here, this transform dot rotates as zombie rotates to the direction where the actual player character is and it rotates at that rate, 0.1f, which means it's a floating point number. So you can actually reduce that and increase that number there to make it sort of faster or slow. But I've just played I found 0.1 just seemed to be just about right. But you can make it worse or slower. So you do that. This here forces it to move at 0.01 speed but I found that when I did that it was actually sort of like moonwalking across the landscape so I actually commented this out because I didn't find it to be useful but you might want to if you're using other um, other sort of uh, assets from the Unity store you might want to play about with this I've left that in just to show you that will force him to move on the Z thing which remember Z is across the ground and X and Y, Y is up and down, and X is your left and right, but you want that one, he's just moving forward. So we set in, is walk is true now, and the other two are false. So it puts us in the actual walk animation. So he does the walk animation. And the way that the animators set up this character is if you go, is walk, he actually physically moves slowly as well. So it does this automatically, this line. So that's why I've not done it this time, because it's already doing this. Here, I've set the distance as 0.1. So in other words, sorry, 1.5. That is you on, it, on it just about. And then it will do the attack animation. Its arms will flare out and attack you. But it stops walking and it's definitely not in the idle state. Um, there you are. Now, if you look, scroll down here, I've left these two in just to show you that I did attempt to do it on a... Before I did take damage, we used something called on trigger enter so basically this AI behavior is just a pure modification of this with extra elements in that I've sort of discovered and researched myself so I tr initially tried to do on trigger enter these do work however I found them to be a little bit glitchy and you were taking really basically the damage that you were taking was massive um, so I didn't quite get these working properly there probably is a way of getting them working properly on trigger enter and on trigger exit. Um, there probably is a way of doing it. And remember, these are just this is my first attempt. It does work, it was just a bit flaky, it didn't work very well. But now, so what I've got is on the on the zombie character, I've attached the AI behavior script to him. If I press play, then what happens is let me just show you in action. So here, my angle is not 35, so he's not responding to me. He's in the idle state. Look, go around the back. He's not doing anything, which is what you want. Now, as soon as I get within the 35 degrees, watch what happens. There. He's jumped towards me, and now he's in the walk animation. Can you see? And then when he gets within a certain distance, I will take damage, which I have, and he does the attack animation. I back off. And he moves to a different state. He's now in the walk state. Look, and walk around. Here is slurping round. 0.1 slur. He's in the walk animation. It's quite slow. What you don't want zombies. Zombies shouldn't be fast. Zombies are supposed to be slow. In fact, if he gets close to me, he's going to go back in the attack state and I'll take more damage. And see, it's not even perfect now. I took too much damage. The way I've got it, he only takes damage when you first enter it. Once you leave it, it resets it so you can take more damage. You'll have to fiddle about with this to try to get it working. So let me just show you my code. AI behavior. 
so the bits that you want to draw I'll just try to maximize this because this is the key bit here is these bits here is idle is walking is attacking these are the three bits and this is how it calculates your distance and your angle uh, and you need to set them up here and we're using player the health bar manager linking it and the anim here so if I go to you remember he's got to point to the player as well here he points to the player character because he doesn't know who player is unless you actually link your um, player character and drag and drop that down there so he knows who the player is because he doesn't know the angle unless you actually tell it is and remember these here sorry player and HB you need to physically drag and drop the bits and pieces down so you now have a working game and because I've got the assets that I have I can I've got some low poly assets I've found from the Unity store I can start to add some um, I've got all sorts of bit I've got some terrains I've got some campfire I've got also the bits and pieces here that I've been playing about with but for the purpose of this video we ha now have an animation controller working I've explained we have the character walking towards us him slurping we're taking damage uh, and I've also sh introduced this concept of a circular um, circular sort of uh, health bar so uh, I hope you enjoyed this short video uh, and this is teacher Wayne uh, calling it a day thank you very much and goodbye